Here's an example on depreciation under various methods and including the part year depreciation. Here are the facts for our example. An asset was purchased with a cost of $360,000, an estimated life of eight years or 70,000 units, and an estimated salvage value of $10,000. The asset was purchased with three months left in the year. So our first year's depreciation, we're going to make sure we calculate as three-twelfths of a year for our part year depreciation. And the first year in usage was 1,500 units. Now we don't really have to worry about part years with the estimated number of units because if the machinery was only available for part of the year, then it could only produce part of the year's units. So we don't have to ever worry about that. That's already been accounted for. That is our annual depreciation. And we haven't taken care of part year depreciation yet, but that's just our annual depreciation. If we divide the depreciable base of $350,000 um, divided by the 70,000 estimated units, and you're going to find that your activity rate is $5 per unit. Now again, remember the units of activity. There's no special treatment for a partial year. So based on the information we have going forward, let's figure out what the first year's depreciation is. Well, if we know that the annual straight line depreciation is 43,750, and then in the first year, we're gonna take three months of that, so we're going to take three-twelfths of that and find out that the year one depreciation is $10,938. When it comes to the activity method, we've got $5 per unit, and we used 1,500 units. So our year one depreciation under the units of activity is $7,500. I like to use tables for to calculate depreciation because they help set up your information and you can find any year, any depreciation, any net book value you need. And while this table looks like we're actually gonna take depreciation for nine years, we're not. What we're really doing is we're gonna take three months in year one and nine months in year nine. Every other year is gonna have an entire year but the three months and the nine months are gonna add up to one year. So we end up with the, the, the right amount of depreciation. And all we've done in that first year is exactly what we did on the prior slide. We're gonna take the 43,750 and we're gonna multiply that by 3 twelfths to get the $10,938. From then, all of the information on our table works out really well. Our accumulated depreciation starts off the first year equal to the total depreciation. And our net book value is our cost of 360 less the accumulated depreciation. I like to make sure that students realize that the net book value starts with 360 and does not start with our depreciable base of $350,000. That's an important thing to remember. Another thing to remember when you're finished with your table is that your net book value at the end your, is, should be $10,000, and that should be equal to your salvage value. What that means is you've depreciated your asset fully, and your total accumulated depreciation when you're finished should equal your depreciable base. 
That means you've depreciated everything correctly. Now this sum of the year's digits uh, is not done for the partial year. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. First thing is, it's an accelerated rate, meaning there's more depreciation the first year than the second year, than the third year, etc., and the amount of depreciation decreases. You have basically pushed it up front or accelerated the depreciation. And this matches some of the assets you might have. For example, the wear and tear or the decrease in value on an automobile is bigger between the year you bought it and the end of the first year than it would be in the entire eighth year you drove it, or tenth year you drove it, or even the second year. So this was the first calculation people came up with as a way to accelerate your depreciation. And what they did was take your numerator, which is how many years are left of your depreciation as of the first day of the year. So basically, if it's eight years, we start with 87654321, and we go in that order. And then your denominator is the sum of the years. And this can be kind of tedious. So, so there's one way to calculate this and make this easy, and that is to take your number of years, multiply it by the number plus 1, and divide it by 2. So in our case, it would be 8 times 9 divided by 2. So it would be 72 divided by 2, which is 36. So our calculation looks as follows. It's your depreciable base times 8 divided by 36. That gives you your depreciation. Same rules apply. Your accumulated depreciation the first year is your depreciation, and your net book value is your cost of 360 minus your accumulated depreciation. The second year, you would end up with 7 divided by the sum of the year's digits of 36. The third year would be 6 divided by 36, and it's all multiplied by your depreciable base. When you're finished, you've got the same things that happen. Your net book value is equal to your salvage value. Your accumulated depreciation is equal to your depreciable base, and you know you've done things correctly. But we have to deal with partial years. Imagine if you ended up having this, let's say we had a calendar year corporation, and you ended up going from October of 2017 to the end of September of 2018. That's kind of how we're dealing with this. Our entire first year depreciation is going to be $77,778. What we're really going to do is take this amount and divide it among two years. We're going to put three months here and nine months here. Then our year two depreciation, we're going to have three months here and nine months here. And the idea is our first year depreciation is going to be here. Our second year is going to include the rest of the first year, the nine months, plus three months of the second year. So we're still calculating depreciation the same way. We're just breaking it apart into portions of the year. So all that's done here was I added space. I added an extra line in here. And you'll see on the next slide, I add an extra column so you can see where everything goes. But that's all we're doing is breaking things apart into portions of the year so we can match them up properly. Now because we added some columns, the text got smaller. I also named the columns a little differently so you don't get them confused. The year is the same, the numerator is the same. This is the depreciation for 12 months. Imagine that from the October 1st to September 30th idea. And of the 77,748, I have three months, at, which is 19,444, and nine months, which is 58,333. The next year's depreciation of 68,056, there's three months of 17,014, and nine months of 51042. 
this follows along. We've got three months and nine months, three months and nine months, three months, nine months, three months, nine months, three months, nine months, three months, and nine months. Now notice we end with a partial year of nine months. That's actually going to match the partial year of three months from the first year. So even though it looks like there's nine years, what we have is three months on the one end, nine months on the other end, and seven complete years in between. Now all we've done is break it apart in according to years. But what we're doing in terms of what we're recording for depreciation is the first year we've got 19,444. The second year, we're combining the rest of that first year of 58,333 and the beginning of the second year of 17,044. That gives us $75,347. Same thing goes with the third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year, seventh year, eighth year, and our little partial year. So we still have the same depreciation we calculated earlier, we've just apportioned it differently. Same things happen at the end. When we're finished, the net book value is equal to the salvage value, and the total accumulated depreciation is equal to our depreciable base. Now double declining balance has an interesting problem. In double declining balance, we end up with 2 divided by the life, and that becomes our rate. Well, 2 divided by 8 is 25%, so we're okay with the 25% as our rate. We're going to multiply 25% times the net book value. The interesting part is what happens in future years. In the first year, we do need to multiply by 3 twelfths. And we find out that we got a part year depreciation of $22,500. That gives us accumulated depreciation of $22,500 and a net book value at the end of $337,500. I find it useful to always have net book value at the beginning and net book value at the end. That way you never have to worry about, oh, is this what I started with or end with? Make it obvious. The problem with net book value and the double declining balance is it depends what your salvage value is. If your salvage value was $50,000, we would plug right here before year eight because you're never supposed to let your net book value go below your salvage value. If your salvage value is $25,000, you would actually have to stop it in year 11. But that's a problem. This is only an eight-year asset. So part of our problem, the issue with the double declining balance is, is you're always taking a percentage. So if you're taking a percentage, the amount gets smaller and smaller, but you never actually hit the number, your target number. And that's why we kind of plug to double decline balance when we get there. But with such a small salvage value of $10,000 and such a small percentage of 25%, well, most of the double declining balances that you've ever done problems are, are at 33 or 50%, etc. So one of the problems is we wouldn't actually get to where we have to stop double declining balance here until year 14. And that makes no sense on an asset that only has eight years. So there ought to be a mechanism to make you stop it. We said the asset has a life of eight years, so there's no reason I should keep it on my books until year 14. And there's no reason I really want to make sure I, I stop this asset when it hits $10,000 because that's my salvage value. But my salvage value was intended on being here at the end of year eight. So I end up with a problem. What really happens in these situations is common sense takes over. And organizations that end up having a double declining balance that's less than 33% usually fall into this category where they're dealing with this. But we end up 
saying, let's convert over. So there comes a point that we say, let's switch over to straight line. Because we're never ever, if we're only going to take in 25%, we're never going to hit our target rate. It ends up being so long that we're here in year 14 before we have to do something. Well, remember back when we did our straight line? Our straight line was $43,750. What typically happens in companies like this is once your depreciation start, drops below 43750 you'd have been better off doing straight line. So this is the point where it no longer makes sense to use double declining balance. So it ends up being converted, so it ends up double de declining balance to straight line method. And what really happens is, is we know that the 43750 is my converting point. But my net, I can't use 43750 as my depreciation rate. That makes no sense at, at coming out. I only have $142,000 in my net book value. But this is the point where I take 142,383, subtract out my salvage value, and come up with a new depreciable base. That means my new depreciation straight line for what's left is $33,096. I skip the old years, five, six, seven, eight, under double declining balance, convert it to straight line, and I end up with the same thing I should have, a net book value at the end equal to my salvage value, and accumulated depreciation equal to my depreciable base. Now, if your company doesn't say they switch over, then you have to use the old method. Just know that when in the old method with double declining balance, you might have things that are supposed to be eight years. They might go nine and ten. They might end up being six. It really depends on the size of your salvage value item. So don't get hooked on that it has to be eight years because you could change your salvage value and make that match. But this is the straight line switch to, or double declining balance with the switch to the straight line method.